Write down, Lord, what are the things you've spoken to me? And God will begin to speak to you. Whatever it is, He will minister to you. Praise God. Amen. Maybe to love somebody more, increase some love. Buy him a headset from Javier, from, you know, Jumbo Electronics. Go bless that person. Come on. Increase. Increase giving. God is pleased with that. Praise God. Jesus is saying, Matthew 10, 37, whoever loves his father or mother, son or daughter, more than me, is not worthy of me. Think about it. We love our parents, right? Yes. We love our children, right? Yes. But if you love them more than Jesus, Jesus is saying, oh, he's not worthy of me. So there's a big question mark when you, you know, read these kind of verses. We don't like these kind of verses, right? When Jesus says, oh, if you love them more than me, you're not worthy of me. We begin to question Jesus. I want you to talk to Jesus this season. And Jesus himself will relieve, re, you know, reveal himself to you. Amen. Amen. When you bask in his presence, when you bask in the love of God, praise God, if you love me, you'll obey my command. You'll just obey. No questions. Today, unfortunately, there's a law of lawlessness. The Bible says in the last days, lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. It says, come here. They go that side. It says, come. Let's spend time. No. Children, especially children. Children, obey your parents. That's what the Bible says. Because that is well pleasing to him. Let me give you the scripture. Coloss Colossians 3.20. Children, memorize the scripture. Children, obey your parents in some things. In one thing. In all things. Children, shout out. In all things. Come on. In all things. Why? Why? For this is well pleasing to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hitherto, you know, if you haven't been obedient to your parents, start today. Even the other people, I'm not talking just about children, every person in this room. If you haven't been obedient to your parents, just obey them. Because that's what, that's a blessing in that. Obey your parents in the Lord in all things. Praise God. It is well pleasing to the Lord. Think about it. Praise God. Different things, instructions are given. No problem with us is we tend to live in the flesh. Romans 8, 8 says, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We give ourselves to carnality. Correct? When we live our lives, ah, right now, okay, after church, I want to have this burger. Evening, okay, I want to have a burger from there. I want to explore all the burger joints in the city. I want, I want, I want, like pregnant woman. Oh, now I want watermelon. Now I want uh, basket rolls. Come on. Give up your rights. Give up your desires. Those who are in that carnal flesh cannot please God. If you want to please God, give up carnality. Praise God. Bring it to God. Bring it to Him. I like what the psalmist says. Psalm 147 verse 10 and 11. The Lord does not delight in the strength of a horse, nor in the legs of a man, but He takes pleasure in those who fear Him. Praise God. Take that scripture into your spirit and say, God, thank you that you don't delight in the legs of a man. Man thinks he's smart, but you don't take pleasure in the legs of a man. You don't take pleasure in the legs of my boss. You take pleasure in the one who fears him. Even if you're in that office, if you're the only one who fears him, God will begin to do great things in that office. Amen. In that workplace, in that school, in that hospital, wherever you are, God will do great things. Praise God. In your business, believe that God will do great things as you fear him. Amen. I'm not degrading a horse, but scripture says God doesn't delight in the strength of a horse. He doesn't delight in the legs of a man. He delights in those who fear him. And for too long, I think we've been pleasing men, seeking the approval of men. Correct? Yes or no? For too long, I think many of us have been seeking the approval of, approval of men, approval of our boss, approval of someone. Hey, come on, let go this day forth. Say, God, I just want to please you. Of course, you, are, you need to be in submission to that authority. Amen? Doesn't mean today you leave this place and say, Pastor said, I just need to please, uh, you know, uh, only God. I'm not going to be bothered with the government. So you just take off on, a, on your car, go at 140 and get two fines and say, Pastor, what is this? I got two fines. Come on. You need to walk in submission to authority. God has placed authority here. So you need to walk in that. But what I'm saying is, have a deep desire to please God. Amen. Praise God. Hebrews 11.5. I, I don't have time. We'll, we'll dwell on it next time. Talking about Enoch. Enoch was taken away because he walked with God. You know, faith pleases God. And this word is, you know, it's talked about Jesus even. In John 8.29. I, I like what Jesus says. John 8.29. He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. I want you to declare this over yourself. For I always do the things that please Him. Look at the, look at the topmost, topmost desire of 
Jesus. He who sent me is with me. So when you live life here in Qatar, I want you to declare this Jesus. He who sent me to this nation is with me. Praise God. The Father has not left me alone. You're not fatherless. You're not, uh, you know, orphan. Praise God. We often move around with an orphan spirit. But praise God, the time has changed. You are no longer alone. The Father has not left you alone. For you always do the things that please Him. So develop that desire to please the Father. Amen. When you know the heart of the Father and begin to please Him, things begin to happen. He will never leave nor forsake you. And this is what the Father said to Jesus in Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. The baptism. This is my beloved Son with whom, with whom I am well pleased. Praise God. Even on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew 17 verse 5, same words. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So I want you to take a moment, no matter what has happened, I want you to just, you know, close your eyes and talk to the Father and say, God, I just thank you that you are pleased with me. Maybe I've lived a life of lawlessness. But Lord, this day forth, I want to have a deep desire to please you. I want to please the heart of the Father. Come on, talk to him. Talk to him. And as you talk to him, God is saying, this is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Just as he spoke to Jesus, he's speaking to us this morning. Hallelujah. This is my beloved son. Put your name there. Oh, Ranjit, I am his beloved son. Oh, Anju, I am his beloved daughter. He's well pleased with me. Put your name there and talk to God for a moment. Hallelujah. Worship God. Worship God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just as you spoke to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. You are here this morning, right now in this room in New Life Fellowship in Altumama, Lord. In this Villa 68, Lord. You are moving in our midst, oh God. And thank you, the words that you speak. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. In whom I am well, well pleased. Come on, what do you celebrate? Put your hands together for Jesus. Some of the things that God is pleased with, I'll quickly share and I'll close. Intercession. God is pleased with intercession. Whenever you intercede and stand in the gap for somebody, God is pleased. Even in your home, corporately, wherever you are, when you pray, when you become a man and woman of prayer, God is pleased. Let me show you the scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Paul is telling Timothy, 1 Timothy 2 1 to 4. I exhort you now that prayers and supplications and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, not just some men, all men. Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Jain, all men, atheists, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. And then what happens? Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So intercession is acceptable to God. Praise God. That's your neighbor in front of you and say, hey, intercession is acceptable to God. Come on, tap it. Tap it. Intercession. The person in front of you, intercession is acceptable. Is pleasing to God. So whenever you gather together, whether it's a home group, whether it's corporate prayer, whether it's a family, oh by the way, family prayer, please, those who are not have, having family prayer should have a family prayer. When you gather together, when you pray, praise God, it is pleasing to God. It is acceptable to God, as he's saying here. Praise God. Why, why is it acceptable to God? Because God is saying, I desire, the next verse, verse 4, I desire that all men might be saved. Praise God. He desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So intercession pleases the heart of God. How many of you are willing to be intercessors? I want you to not lift your hands, but take time in the season to pray for somebody. Maybe for too long you've been praying about yourself. Oh, I want to please my boss. I want to please so and so. I want to please so and so. Stop it. I want to please the heart of the Father. What is the heart of the Father? To stand in the gap. To intercede. Pray for the Emperor. When is the last time you prayed for the Emperor of this nation? Oh, please, we know why. Start praying. Start praying from the royal family. You know, two, three people shared that they had an opportunity to enter a Qatari home and pray. I know Gita, but where's Gita? Gita ministers to many Qataris. I think Joe ministered that she had an opportunity to, you know, work with another Qatari family. Pastor Johnson had an opportunity. Many of you will have opportunities to go into Qatari homes. Hey, pray for them. 
Because as you intercede, things begin to happen. Praise God. Intercession pleases the heart of the Father. Praise God. And I talked about obedience. Children being obedient. When you obey God, when you obey God, there's a blessing. Psalm 37 verse 23, 24. The steps of a good man. Each of us are good men and women because we have the righteousness of God. Not our own righteousness, but the righteousness that is imputed to us. Oh, I love that. Sometimes we might brag and boast about ourselves. Say, oh, I am the head and so and so. I am this and that. Hey, come on, leave it alone and say, I have righteousness that is imparted because of what Christ has done for me. He is all my righteousness. That's why we stand complete. Let's sing that song. He is all my righteousness. I stand complete in Him. with 
integrity. In 1 Chronicles 29 verse 17, you know, David is ready to anoint Solomon, you know, prepare him to be king. He says, I know my God, you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. God is pleased with what? Integrity. No stealing, no nonsense. God wants you to live a righteous life. Amen. Every person listening in the sound of this room, if you're a child, if you're an adult, if you're an old person, wherever you are, in your workplace, in school, in college, in your hospital, be a man and woman of integrity. Praise God. Amen. Probably you look at some person and say, ah, oh, this fellow, I know he's stolen things. Ah, this guy. You begin to judge. Hey, judge nobody. I'm telling you. Jesus said, don't judge anybody. With the same measure that you've, you've, you've used to judge, you will be judged. So forget it. Forget judging anybody. Bring yourself to God and say, God, I want to be a man and woman of integrity. Praise God. Because when you pursue integrity, God himself is pleased with that man and woman who walks in integrity. Praise God. Praise God. I don't have much time. I want to close. The last thing. Psalm 69 verse 30 and 31. When you praise God, there's great things that happen in the heavenlies. Amen. The psalmist is saying, Psalm 69 verse 30 and 31. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Why? Verse 31. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with his horns and hoofs. Think about it. When you worship God, God is pleased more than any strength of an ox or a bull. Praise God. So in this season, I want you to increase your worship. Increase your worship. Along with that desire telling God, God, I want to please you. God, my heart's desire is like Jesus. I want you to say these words to me. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Forget the past. Forget what I've done in the past. Start afresh. Praise God. That's the beauty of God. You can start afresh anytime with God. And today, November 1st, 2019, make it a desire. Lord, I want to start afresh. I rededicate my life to your God. Forget the past. I want to forget the former things. You're doing a new thing for me. You're making a way in the wilderness. Lord, I've been in the wilderness for too long. But thank you that you're making a way for me. Praise God. How many of you believe that? God is making a way for you. In this season, as you please God, it's, it's, it's something that pleases the heart of the Father. Praise God. Worship. As you worship God. We take a moment to just worship God. And I want to just... You know, worship God in this song. I want to know you. I want to see your face. Come worship me quickly. We worship God. I want to stand to your feet. How many of you want to please God? You have a desire to please God after listening to the scripture this morning. Ask God for that stirring in your hearts. Because God is pleased with a man and woman who pleases Him. Praise God. Let's be fully pleasing to Him. Not 25%, not 50%. God wants us to please him.